45 minutes left in our drive. Yay! We're uh, both pretty excited. It's been a long day. It was about literally a five hour drive plus because we had to stop for gas twice. Uh, we got lunch, which was a nice little break in Puerto uh, Rosalita. Uh, Puerto Rosalita. But uh, we only got about 45 more minutes straight out to the Pacific Coast uh, where we were fishing before in the mangroves. And so we're pretty excited because it literally people fish it there all the time, but I just don't think it gets the pressure. Uh, that's why it's such good fishing. And then it doesn't even, it gets a lot of spin fishermen and stuff, but they don't go where we go, where I learned where to go. It's like a special place. Uh, it holds a lot of big uh, grouper. It's got uh, halibut and it also has a large corvina that are 20 plus inches, 20, 22, 24 inch fish. Uh, so, and they rip, they're just like a salmon, silver salmon ripping across the surface. Uh, anyways, pretty excited. It'll be, uh, what is today, Saturday? Uh, it's about almost five o'clock, so I don't know if we'll get to fish tonight because uh, the tide's probably coming in right now. I mean, it could be different here than the Sea of Cortez because two different oceans, basically. Uh, but uh, anyways, we'll see here what we find out. Uh, the reality is, is that uh, it's a weekend, so probably today and tomorrow it might be a little busy. But other than that, I think uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we should get a chance. They have shower, hot showers here. I'm excited about real bathrooms. Uh, so we get a chance to just kind of, we'll do some hand laundry. Uh, and then again, it's Saturday. So we're gonna fish here Sunday, all day tomorrow uh, when the tide's out. Monday, Tuesday, and then probably in the morning Wednesday if, it, if it's tied out in the morning, uh, which I think it is. Uh, so that'll give us a chance to fish half the day and then we'll head for the border on Wednesday. And it'll probably take us at least that rest of the day Wednesday, we'll drive to Giro Negro, be able to camp out there. And then uh, the next two days, just hauling ass up towards the border. So it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, there's some places I'd like to stop on the way home, uh, but hopefully we'll get back up there. Maybe try and get up there by uh, either, depending on, how everything goes either Friday so uh, going across the border on a Friday or reality is is most likely we'll take our time because we're not gonna do eight hour days driving and we're gonna probably spend a day in Ensenada to visit our friend Emma uh, and say thank you for everything and she did for us again and take her out to dinner and then uh, maybe cross the border on Monday morning early or Sunday morning early uh, we'll see depends on what day we get in there. But that way we don't have to deal with the border traffic because it can be pretty hectic on the weekends. Uh, and then we can go see John on our way to our parents, have coffee or lunch or dinner with him, and then head back up to my parents' house. Start editing all this footage I've gotten because I'm gonna be editing for literally probably uh, four or five days solid of editing, really is the reality. Um, I already started on a few hours worth of video and have a head start on that, but I've got uh, about three micro SD cards, 128 gigabyte each card. So that's quite a bit of video. So anyways, though, we're traveling this last little bit. Roads kind of in so-so condition. Uh, we are excited because that means it's the end of the day. We can like I said, a hot shower tonight, uh, set up camp, sleep really good, get up and fish and, and catch some big fish tomorrow. So I'm excited. All right, peace out. We'll see you in camp. Just a few more, a few more miles and we're done. Hey, it's bumpy, huh, honey? Yeah. Oh, there we are. Hey, we just turned onto the road for Campo Renee. Uh, this is the fishing, fishing, fishing place. It's a great place to fish. Uh, it has uh, survived the onslaught of Baja fishing for whatever hundred years that's been going on. This is one place they protected, and uh, so the fishing's still good. And uh, we 
Cape one here and there, but we really catch and release most of the fish in here, especially the grouper. That's like a unwritten law. You just don't take them, you release them. And uh, so that way they can uh, continue to reproduce and uh, it'll be an awesome fishery. The Corvina are awesome in here. It looks like there might be a camper or two in here, but I'm hoping not too many, and hopefully they're just people here marauding. 600 so meters, you will arrive at your destination. Hopefully they're people, just locals uh, that live within a you know a town over there, uh, Punta Rebos, or they live close, uh, maybe uh, Giro Negro, or who knows, and they just come down here for the weekend with their family to camp out. It's a beautiful, nice place to camp out. And it gets warm here, but with the Pacific, it's not too bad. Uh, the wind usually you comes up. No, I haven't. The wind usually uh, picks up in the afternoons uh, here, but it's nice because it cools everything down. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to this. Be a good way to end the Baja uh, adventure. Well, it's not going to be done by any means, but this is definitely a, a good spot to hit on the way out of Baja heading up to the U.S. So. Anyways, we're almost there. We make our turn just up here in a little bit. Pacific Ocean's out that way, the way Onagi is facing. And then the uh, Punta uh, Coyote, the, the uh, mangroves is just here off to this side. And you can see all the buildings are coming up here. In a short second, we'll have a view of everything. Pretty excited. Tide's in right now, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's just coming in now, so. Uh, it's filling in, but uh, should be in the morning. We should be able to fish here. Hopefully that's the, the deal. So look, here you go. And uh, hopefully we'll see those dolphins in here. Who knows? Yeah, there's only what, two, two other people in here. So pretty cool. So we should, uh, hopefully we'll have fishing to ourselves, uh, at least for tomorrow until the other people arrive, uh, Gary and friends. We'll see what happens. Hey, how's it going? So right on, we went, we got here, we got to camp. We're, we're hanging out. You can see right past my drawers. <laughs> There's a estuary. We were here uh, about a week and a half ago there about something like that. Anyways, uh, we are, we went out fishing first light, went out fishing cause the tide was out and caught us a Corvina. I got two nice big fillets off of it. Uh, and uh, now what I'm doing is I'm cutting it up, uh, deboning it, and then cutting it up, and then just making these little chunks out of it. If you're from the Philippines, uh, hey, hello. <laughs> uh, you guys call it Kenny Lau there. Uh, you mix uh, fish with vinegar and, uh, and other vegetables and cilantro and onions and tomatoes and cucumbers and stuff. Uh, and here in Mexico, they do essentially the same thing, except instead of vinegar, they use lime juice because the citrus, citrus, citrus acid, citric acid. There you go. Citric. It's morning. Sorry. I haven't had my coffee yet. Citric acid uh, actually cooks the fish. So I'm basically just piling up a bunch of fish in the bottom of that. And then I got a ton of little limes and I'm going to squeeze the lime juice over them and then let it sit for probably about a half an hour, 45 minutes, and it'll be done. And then I'll add some cilantro, I'll add some onions, and uh, we'll be good to go. But I'll, I'll show you the process as we go. Just gonna be chopping up the fish for the next few minutes. Then we'll chop up some onions, add that. Well, after the, we'll put the lime juice in first, let it cure. I usually let it cure first, uh, cook, cure, whatever, with the lime juice for half an hour, 45 minutes, and then, you know, keep stirring it a little bit so all the fish gets covered. And uh, and then uh, after that, I start chopping up all the veggies. Uh, I chop up jalapenos, I chop up red onion, I chop up cilantro, and then tomatoes, and then I mix that all in with it. Uh, and then just eat it on like uh, these, like tostada chips, like a tortilla chip kind of thing, corn tortilla chip. Oh, it's so good. That's what we're having for breakfast. Uh, best meal of the day, ceviche. <laughs> All right. So I was gonna, here's the filet. Just a nice big Corvina filet. And it's got this muscle meat here, which is actually really good too. 
but uh, we're just gonna um, make it all into ceviche. I was gonna do some into fry up some fish for breakfast, but I think I'm gonna just do the ceviche because I really, really like it. So just kind of cleaning it off and then continue chopping. <laughs> There's a few little bigger bones along here in the bottom, uh, which I can deal with. Uh, I filleted pretty good, even though I didn't have a fillet knife. This knife is pretty sharp and works pretty good. Ah, big thick bone. It's a pretty amazing game fish. You hook them and they just go swimming off, so it's fun. All right, I'm gonna get to chopping and uh, we'll see you in a sec. Hey, how's it going? So now we're squeezing limes. I got this cool lime squeezer, right? And you put half a lime in there and then you squeeze the juice right down into the, the fish here. So I'll just squeeze enough limes to cover that fish in the juice. Stir it a little bit and let it sit. I can actually put it in my cooler and uh, just let it sit for about a half an hour, 45 minutes or so. The longer the better, but you get to let it sit overnight, but you really don't need to. It only takes about 30, 45 minutes for it to get good and juicy. Good and cooked, I should say. But yeah. The lime squeezer makes it so much easier than hand squeezing limes. Oh my God. Life would be miserable without a lime squeezer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's how it's done. Look at that. Getting that juice in there. I would just do probably a few more limes and we'll be good. It doesn't take much. Even these little limes have a fair amount of juice in them, so they're good. Cool. Keep going. Hey, so we just cut up a piece of garlic. Uh, it's kind of a purple garlic. It's really nice garlic here in uh, Baja. They grow it. And, uh, and then now we got a nice big fat jalapeno pepper. And we're going to dice that up real small and toss that in. And then a nice, what's we got another red onion, but I'm gonna use the rest of this one. And then we got a whole bunch of cilantro in the bag and uh, we'll put all that stuff in, but we'll uh, we'll add the peppers, uh, but we'll wait for the onions and the cilantro till the fish cooks a little more in that lime juice. And uh, yeah, that's it. Just keep chopping. Hey, so I'm getting ready to go jump in the shower this morning, uh, but uh, I just want to show you, we got some cilantro chopped up, red onions. We've got an avocado. We'll put some slices on top after we serve it uh, and then cut up some tomatoes. And I put the uh, ceviche in the cooler and you can see, look, see how the fish is turning white in there. And all I put in there was garlic and uh, the jalapenos chopped up because that'll help flavor that fish, get a little spice with the lime juice. But uh, yeah, so just not too much longer. I'm going to go, uh, like I said, go take a shower. And when we come back, uh, we'll be eating that for breakfast. I'm pretty stoked. Yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. All right, peace out. Hey, how's it going? So I got the campers right here. And uh, this is like the overhang. And then you can see the trailer. And what I do is I got a big platform right here. Here, check it out. I'll back it up a little bit. Look at that. So there's the camper and the trailer's under, of course, truck's right there. But I had them build this big platform here. I'm gonna eventually put a lock box on there. But now what I do is I throw my chair there so that I can sit in the shade and just check this out. See that first jump? But I wanna show you the ceviche. Look at that. There's ceviche in there with the avocado. And then of course we use these chips. I'll dig in there, let you see some of it. But I put a little hot sauce on the top. Oops. Whoa, whoa. Ceviche. Ah. Primo. So good. Oh my God. That's my lunch. We're just going to hang out here in the shade and uh, post up. That's the ceviche. Yeah, living large. Watch the, the, the fish jump and watch the birds fly. That's our life. Oh, that's so good. Oh my God. Uh -huh. mm.
Yeah. It's a, it, it's a little bit of work goes into making CHA. You gotta cut up a bunch of stuff and all that, but, and the fishing too, but, oh, it's worth the wait. So good. That was a good lunch. You just ate that ceviche, the fish we caught this morning. Here's the camper trailer. Wanagi is under there somewhere. Here she goes. Hey, there she is, little wonder dog. Yeah, and uh, we're just gonna do our dishes and then we might sit in the sun a little bit. Uh, it's kind of cool in the shade because the wind's blowing, but it's nice. But you can see the water looks beautiful. We're waiting for the tides starting to go out again. So maybe in like, maybe two or three hours, uh, we'll be fishing again. Uh, pretty excited, because uh, we're gonna go after those grouper. The big grouper, yeah. We release them all, because they're uh, precious fish in this area. They're, uh, this is like their nursery grounds, kind of, for the groupers. And then they go out in the ocean, they get up to 80 pounds out in the ocean here. Pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna do dishes, clean up, Maybe eat some marzipans. These are marzipans. They're like a sweet treat uh, down here. It's made with peanut butter and then it's got sugar and stuff in there and stuff, but oh, they're just so good. Um, anyways, but that's our dessert. We're gonna clean up our plate and then, like I said, just go kick back and enjoy the day. Hope you're enjoying yours. Peace out.